When you think of successful YouTube channels, MKBHD has to come near the top of any list. The guy has been making videos since he was a little kid, and since then, he's grown his love for technology into over 15 million subscribers, interviewing major celebrities like Elon Musk, Bill Gates, and Kobe Bryant along the way. I've been watching MKBHD videos for years, and he just seems to be getting better and better with time. But from a cinematography perspective, what exactly is MKBHD doing? Because I can tell you right now that nothing about how great his channel looks is an accident. He clearly puts a huge amount of thought and effort into filmmaking techniques. And in this video, I'm gonna get into some of them and how it's helped make him into the YouTube powerhouse he is today. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth, documentary cinematographer and filmmaker. And on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years of working in the documentary photography and film industry. Even if you're not super into the world of tech, if you're into filmmaking, chances are you've come across MKBHD videos before. I definitely don't watch every video it puts out because let's be honest, I don't really care about all the new cell phones and gadgets coming out every day. But so many times when I'm looking at buying a new computer or a pair of headphones or something, it's his videos that I click on first. I mean, they're just so polished polished and professional looking, it's hard not to. But how exactly does he get them looking that way? In this video, I'm gonna get into three of the things I've noticed MKBHD doing regularly from a filmmaker's perspective to make his videos stand out from the countless other tech channels out there. <laughs> If you look at MKBHD's early videos, you can see that he wasn't born knowing exactly how to make a high-end tech review. In fact, before we even get into these techniques, I think it's worth mentioning one thing, maybe the most important thing that he's done to earn his success, and that's his determination. If we look at this video from the early days of his channel, you can see that not all of his videos have looked as good as they do now. In fact, in this clip, he's celebrating his 100th video where he only has 70 subscribers, and visually, it looks terrible. Now, I haven't been in the YouTube game very long and I have a tiny channel by his standards, but if I had made and published a hundred videos and still only had 70 subs, I'm not sure I would have kept going. So before we credit MKBHD's success to his filmmaking techniques alone, let's remember that the guy has put in some serious time to get where he is. Getting a sweet camera and all the best stuff out there won't make nearly as much of a difference as putting in consistent effort over time. But how much does MKBHD himself care about gear? The answer is a lot. And that brings me to the first thing that sets him apart as a filmmaker, and that's the fact that he's always using the very best gear that he can afford at the time. Now, I know I just said that gear is less important than determination, and it might seem a little weird to kick it off by saying that MKBHD only uses the best, but notice I said the best he can afford. If we look at his old videos again, it's obvious that he wasn't always doing this. In my opinion, you'd have more success making 100 videos with an iPhone rather than dropping 50 grand on the latest and greatest camera and not putting in the hours. MKBHD upgraded his gear as his channel grew, not right off the bat. But now that he's at the top of his game, I'm guessing he can afford pretty much any camera system he wants. And you can see it in the quality of his footage. The last I heard, he was using RED cameras almost exclusively and usually pairing them with Sigma cinema lenses. Now, Sigma cinema lenses aren't as expensive as something like an Airy Master Prime, but at around $4,000, it's still a high-end YouTube setup. And a fully built-up RED camera with all the accessories that you need might come in at around $50,000, depending on which model. So that's no joke. In terms of his lighting setup, I've also seen him using Airy Sky Panels, which are almost $7,000 a piece. If you've never heard of Airy, they're the company of choice for Hollywood. And pretty much every big studio movie is shot using an Airy camera. They've been around for decades, and if you want the very best of the best, you can't go wrong with Airy stuff. But if you compare that with something like the Aperture Nova, which does most of the same stuff as the Airy Sky Panel and only costs $1,700, it's clear that MKBHD prioritizes having the very best regardless of price. And even though I'm a big believer in using the best tool you can afford and not getting hung up on needing to have the very best of everything, this makes perfect sense for his channel. I mean, he's a tech reviewer, and so I can understand why he'd want to use the highest tech out there when making his videos. Just don't think that you also need a red camera and a set of sky panels to go out and make YouTube videos or even a high-end documentary, because trust me, you don't. I've shot docs that have run on networks like Netflix and National Geographic and Showtime, and all of those have used way cheaper stuff than MKBHD uses for his YouTube channel. But what does he do with all this gear? If you've ever watched those amateur with a cinema camera versus pro with a cheap camera videos, you'll know that just having a full frame red won't make good shots. Behind all the crazy gear he uses, MKBHD is putting some serious thoughts into his shots. So what exactly is he doing? On his channel, he's the host, but it's the tech that's the star of each video, not him. He's not a character in the same way that someone like Casey Neistat is, and it's his goal to make the stuff he's reviewing look as good as possible, 
even if he doesn't end up liking it in the end. And he really does make the tech he features look amazing. MKBHD is a master of product photography, and that's the second thing that I think make his videos a cut above the rest. If you've ever tried to shoot products, you'll know that it's not easy at all to make an iPhone or a laptop look super cool. But MKBHD shots look amazing. They're beautifully lit, which is not easy considering how shiny and reflective a lot of these things are, and he uses a really impressive variety of shots. I've seen him do everything from rotating top-down shots to a crazy expensive robotic camera arm to up his production value, and it really shows. Now, this kind of shooting is not at all my specialty, and when shooting documentaries, it's usually not that important to get clean, evenly lit product shots. But even after 10 years of working with cameras as a professional image maker, it would be a real challenge for me to make products look as good as MKBHD and his team do, and it's clearly one of the main reasons his videos are so compelling. Product photography is an art form that people build whole careers around, and it's way harder than just having a nice camera and some lights. But it's not just the product shots that make MKBHD's style instantly recognizable. In Hollywood movies, DPs spend a crazy amount of time envisioning looks for their movies and then put a ton of effort into making that look consistent throughout. Just think of a movie like Joker where there's the same repeating color scheme all the way throughout, which really helps set the mood and feeling of that world. Or the orange and teal color scheme that we see again and again in movies. These things don't happen by accident, and cinematographers work really hard to achieve those looks. MKBHD does the same thing. When you watch one of his videos, it's instantly recognizable as one of his. And just because it's not a big Hollywood production doesn't mean that he hasn't put a lot of thought into the look. And that's the final thing that I've noticed about MKBHD's channel that makes it look so great. He's developed an aesthetic over time, and he sticks to it religiously. If you watch enough of his videos, you'll see the same visual techniques again and again. The space is always super bright white. It's almost like he's shooting in an Apple store or the spaceship from 2001 A Space Odyssey. His lighting is always high key, even and bright with very few shadows. It's not a moody channel by any means, but because he's talking about futuristic technology, I don't think that's the look he wants. Another thing I love about MKBHD's videos is that his skin tones are always really realistic and the colors are very natural looking. He never puts LUTs on things to make them look more cinematic, and every single video looks this way to the point where I could probably tell I was watching his channel even if he wasn't on the screen. That's the sign of a really strong brand. To get these looks, he uses very soft light fixtures like those sky panels I mentioned before, and then he enhances them by using big soft boxes as well. He never uses hard direct spotlights and he always makes sure the color balance is consistent, giving videos that super clean white look. Even though personally, I like my documentaries to be a little bit more gritty and contrasty, his videos look amazing, especially for a tech channel. Now the takeaway from this isn't that you need to make your videos look the same as his because this look doesn't suit every project. But if you're thinking of shooting a project, take the time to think about the aesthetic you want Go for it and then stick to it as much as possible. You could try making a mood board or downloading a bunch of reference stills that you can look at as you go. But however you do it, deciding on a look before you start filming, like MKBHD does, is gonna help your project pop. Don't wait and try and fix it in post or hope that a LUT will do it for you. Decide first and you'll have much better results. There are a ton of reasons why MKBHD's channel has blown up and I can't possibly go into all of them. He's a passionate guy, a great presenter, He's got a deep knowledge of his subject matter, and generally he just seems like an overall likable person. He also works crazy hard and has been in the game for years. But from a cinematography perspective, those three things are, in my opinion, what makes his channel look so distinctive and give it a style that I've grown to love. I hope you liked that video, and if you want to see more cinematography breakdowns of big name YouTubers, try this one where I look into the filmmaking of Casey Neistat. See ya.